Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to Dynamics 365 Video Tips, your source for Power Platform and Dynamics 365 tips and instruction. We're back and it's been a long time since we've actually had a chance to go out and do some of this. So first and foremost, thank you to all of you who've hung in there over the delay. Um, hopefully we will have an opportunity to go out and put some of these out on a regular basis. Um, as you know, there's a lot of new exciting features and functionality, particularly with the Power Platform and being able to leverage the Power Platform from a Dynamics perspective. So I think you'll also see that we'll, we'll move into other elements and not only will we just talk about Dynamics 365 and some of the sales and customer service and, and stuff that's out there, there, but we'll also venture into some of the power platform and model driven apps since that's really you know what you're in essence doing when you're building Dynamics 365 applications. So where are we going to start? So as you, many of you know, we recently had a Biz Application Summit in Atlanta, Georgia, and one of the exciting announcements that they made was the concept of AI Builder. And so I thought it was a good opportunity to sit down and, and really walk you through what AI Builder is. I had an opportunity to assist in some of the hands-on workshops that were available there that allowed people to kind of get first run with what AI Builder can actually do. And so I wanted to take some some of those items that we learned or that I saw in assisting with those labs and be able to bring those out and, and create some videos for you. So what is AI Builder? AI Builder is an add-on that you can have for Power Apps and for Flow that allows you to go in and build artificial intelligence models directly within that application. Now, once you have those artificial intelligence models built, you can then turn around and surface them in things like Canvas apps or model-driven apps, depending upon what the specific application is. Now, currently it's in preview. It just went into preview uh, just the first part of June, and it's mainly in preview in North America. You should see it in your North America org if you don't, I'll show you where to find some of that here in just a second. There's four basic options that are available currently in the preview of AI Builder. Binary classification, which basically allows you to go out and take historical data and then predict whether or not it falls into one or two categories. So is somebody likely to purchase based upon past situations? Yes or no. Um, is this person, you know, positive or negative. Again, basically you've got an option set you allows you to populate the contents of that option set with either true or false, depending upon what the situation is. You also have form processing. So what form processing lets you do is to look at your documents and you basically upload the structure of your documents and you tell it what the different fields are and where those fields are located on the form. And then as people will update or upload forms into the application, you will then be able to take the contents of that form, extrapolate, and then you can start reading the specific data, maybe in a power app or pass that information into the flow or do something similar with that information from there. Obviously, we wouldn't have artificial intelligence if we didn't have object detection. So they give you object detection, which gives you the ability to count and locate and identify information or items within an image. And then we have text classification, which lets you take snippets of text and, and tag that information based upon historical information that you've provided. Now, we'll kind of walk through each one of these as we go through. Um, I did take and built a lot of this information using the sample data that's out on GitHub. So if you look at the bottom of this field, uh, bottom of this slide, you'll see the GitHub information. But let's go ahead and without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So for those of you who haven't done a whole lot with Power Apps or Power Apps Designer, if you go to make.powerapps.com, this is going to go out and give you not only access to any model-driven apps that you have, but canvas-driven apps, as well as any solutions that may have been imported into your specific environment, flows, and, and all of that information. Up here, you'll see the environment that you're working with. So if you have multiple environments, just make sure that you have all of those environments available. Now, you should see in here the AI Builder Preview if you're in North America. Now, if you don't see it for some reason, it likely just means that it's not turned on for this particular environment. So what you can do is if you open up a new tab and you go to admin.powerplatform.microsoft.com, that is the new Power Platform Admin Center. It takes a lot of the flow and it takes a lot of the Power App stuff and it puts it into kind of one similar or, or straight line point. And if you go into environments, you'll see the environment that you want to work with. If you select the environment and you go into settings, you will see under features, the ability to create AI models in Power Apps. If you're not seeing it in your US environment that you recently spun up, more than likely that's what's happened. If you go into your environments, you'll be able to turn it on. And then the next time you come in, you'll go ahead and you'll see the AI builder inside the application.
Now, when you go to AI Builder and you click on Build, you'll see that you have those four models that we talked about, whether it's binary classification, forms processing, object detection, or text classification. So let's go ahead and just do object detection. So I'm going to go ahead and click on object detection, and I'm just going to call this T Finder because I'm using the sample data that they have uploaded into the application. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Create. When you first come into AI Builder, regardless of what type of AI model you're trying to create, you'll be brought into kind of your, your step by step. So you can see over here, it'll always tell you what your progress is. Now, this is going to vary based upon the AI model that you're working with. Obviously, in this case, since I'm working primarily with object detection, I'm going to have the option to you know define what it is that I'm working with, add images, tag those images, and then train that model so I can work with it from there. Now, like most situations or all items from the AI Builder perspective, it is important that you are running on CD. Yes, whether that's using CDS for the entities that you want to go ahead and store that information in. Maybe that's the entities that are going to have the information that are going to be used as the tags for the items or the images that you're working with. But you do need to have CDS for any of the real AI builder aspects of what it is that you're working with, not just a power app subscription. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit select objects is the first thing that I'm going to do. And this is just going to ask me what specifically do I want to use for this item. Now, as I mentioned, I got some stuff off of GitHub. So I had some sample data and one of the things that they have in the sample data is they already have a table there for object detection. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick search for object detection. And here is my object detection product. And then I'm going to pick the field that I want. Now this particular entity only has one field, which is name, which will help us identify the item. But again, if it's a normal entity utilizing from CDS, you could pick kind of whatever you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and choose name. And then I'm going to select the field. Then it's going to bring me into the labels for that field. So this, this is a kind of an option set scenario. This is going to say, okay, what specific ones do you want to use in order for the object name? So I'm going to go ahead and just pick all these because I'm trying to distinguish. Is it green tea? Is it cinnamon rose? What is the particular option? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. Now, as it goes through the, the next piece to this is now I want to go ahead and add images. So now I'm going to have to upload those images currently as of the the preview and the release as, as to where we're at part, early part of June, you're really just taking images off of your local machine. So you have to upload the images. This is strictly for the training purposes. You know, once you've got the images uploaded, we could certainly go ahead and grab those from other aspects. We could you know use those from a camera or other item, but for uploading, we're going to go ahead and grab those off of our computer. So I'll we'll go ahead and hit add images. I'm going to browse to the item that I want to go ahead and work with. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the AI stuff that I want to work through. Now, in here, you, you can upload as many images as you want, depending upon the situation. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to select all of these images because I am ultimately going to have to tag them as I'm going through. So I'm going to pick as many images as I want in this situation. Open them up. Then it says, here's all the images that you're going to upload. I'll go ahead and upload those. Once the images have been uploaded um, from my local machine, now I'm ready, I can go ahead and I can start tagging them. And so the tag process is really where you're going to identify, you know, what those individual situations are. So we'll give this just a second to finish uploading that information for us, and then we can go ahead and start tagging that information. So I'm going to go ahead and hit close. Now I'm going to hit next, and now I can start tagging my images. So I'll select the image, and then I'll come over here, and as I click on the image, I can go ahead and you'll see as I hover over, it'll kind of give me a box. I can click on that option and now it pops up my tagging scenario. So now this is where I can go through and identify each specific item that I want to go ahead and tag. So this is green tea cinnamon. And then I can go ahead and go on to my next one and continue this process on. So as I hover over, it identifies the item that I'm working with and I can continue to go through. Now I'm not gonna bore you with all of this stuff here. So we'll just go ahead and kind of skip through the tagging process and show you what's next at that point. Now, as you're tagging these, one, <clears throat> 
as you're tagging these, one thing you might notice is as you hover over it, it may not always get it right. It tries to get it, you know, pretty close, but if the object has got a, you know, a, a different border or if there's some weird stuff going on behind it, sometimes it may not get it right. So there's a couple of different ways you can handle this. You do have kind of this click, hold and drag option that you can use, or if you hover over it and it then doesn't necessarily pick the option that you want, you can just resize these barriers around the object to ensure that you are getting specifically what you want in that situation. So I'll go ahead now and tag this as green tea mint. Now I've, I'm done tagging. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit done. And it's going to move me on to the next step in the process. So the final step in this process is to train this. Now, before you train this, you do need to remember that there are minimum requirements. So each object that is going to be used within the, ob the item that you're working with. So in this case, I had the green tea, the cinnamon tea, and the rose tea. They each have to have at least 15 image objects for it. Um, the more images, obviously, that you have, the better results you're going to have. But you do need to have a minimum of 15 items for each object. So I can see here here for green tea, I've got seven for uh, cinnamon tea, I've got 15. And for rose tea, I've got 17 as well. So this now means that I could go ahead and train this model uh, accordingly. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next, train the model. And then as this is training, I can always come back at some other point in time and, and, and work with it, but it'll go through the training process and then it will give me results. And so once I have those results, then I can go ahead and do something with it. Now, while this is training, I'm going to go ahead and open up one that already has kind of some results so you can see what that looks like. So when I go into the T detection, it says, hey, you know what? Here's everything that you have. It shows me that, you know, the accuracy of the item based upon the objects that I've tagged, as well as the images that were in there and now gives me the ability to go ahead and start consuming that somewhere in the application. Now, if at any point you ever need to add additional images, you can always come up here, hit new version, and this will basically walk you through the same process that you did. Now, the nice thing about this is it just kind of revisits each object that was in there. So it shows you the objects that you're working with. If you wanted to make any changes to this, you could then go in and add images or update the existing images that you're working with with, modify the tags, and then walk through that process as well. So it does give you the ability to re-go in and make modifications. You just need to make sure that if you're making mod modifications, you're making modifications as the version that you're working through. Once that model is done training, then you can go ahead and you can publish it. And once you publish it, then it's live and then it can start being consumed inside the application. If I wanted to use AI Builder to do forms processing, I do a lot of the same type of situation. I would click on form processing. I would pick, you know, kind of the name for the model. I'm going to go ahead and just give this a, a quick little example here. And then the big thing with form processing is you really just need to upload the documents that you want to be able to go ahead and analyze. So I'd come into here, hit add documents, find all the documents that I want to bring in. Once I upload those documents, It'll then, when I go through train that, it'll find all of those fields and then I can consume that information inside the application. So I upload the documents. Once all the uh, documents are in there, I can go ahead and analyze the information. As it analyzes the information, it'll define what specific fields are what. And so then what I can do in that situation is I can make sure that, you know, what it's found truly matches what it is that we're going to use on this particular item. So we'll give this just a second. So now that it's been done, now I'm going to go ahead and pick my items. And so now what I can do is I can see as, as I go through this, it's kind of told me here's kind of what it's matched. And so as I click on this, I can now define what specific items I want to be able to use inside this form through different areas of the application. So as I go through and I click on this, I can say, okay, here's the different sections. Now, if for some reason, I don't want the table forms to show up in there, but I do want to make sure that I've got due dates and balance dues and all that stuff. You really just kind of select the information that you want and then you hit done. And then once you're done, you can go ahead and train the model. And now the model could be consumed inside the application. So how would I consume this? So once your model has been created, now you can go ahead and you can start surfacing, particularly the object and the form stuff inside canvas apps using power apps. So if I come up here and just do create an app and I'm going to do a canvas app, 
Now I'll see that as the Canvas app gets created, I follow the normal protocol. Is this going to be a phone or a tablet, depending upon what the situation is? I'm going to go ahead and I'll just make this a tablet layout for now so I can kind of highlight both elements or both situations. So I'm going to go ahead and make this a tablet scenario. Now I'm going to go in here into here and I can go up into insert and I can use the AI builder preview. So what do I want to insert? Now there is already an out of box control called business card reader that is basically just allows you to scan a business card and it'll put all the fields into a specific entity or an item inside the application based upon what you're building. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and use my object detector. So when I click on my object detector, this is now going to add an object detector element into the application. And you'll see that from here, any object detection model that I have available is, uh, is an option here that I can go ahead and choose. So I'm going to associate this with my object detection. And so now I'm going to go ahead and size this particular element however I want. Now, let's say I wanted to go ahead and use the form option. So now I have a form processor, so I'm going to go ahead and choose form processor. I'm going to use my invoice processing model and I'll just kind of position this one somewhere on the form that I want as well. Now from here, if I was actually going to do this in power apps, I mean, I would actually add, you know, the entities and, and link the information in. This is more just to illustrate how to consume that information once you have it. So now I'm going to go ahead and just play my app. I'm going to hit detect. It's going to say, what image do you want to use? So I'll come into here, find my images that I want to use, do test pick a specific image that I want to work with, hit open. And then as I upload the image based upon my model, it is going to show me what those specific images are. So I can see that it picked up my green tea mint, it picked up my green tea rose and my green tea cinnamon. Now this is an object inside power app. So I could now take the information from that item and I could now surface it or use it in other elements or other items from the application. Same thing with here. If I go to analyze, now I could come into here because of my form control, go to form processing, grab a form, that same element, upload that information, and now it will go through and analyze all of that form information. Now, if I were to come back into here, now, what if we want to do something with this? So depending upon your experience level with power apps and, and understanding how to build formulas and canvas apps, a lot of times, if you want to populate values of fields or items, you're doing that based upon, you know, items that are coming from other objects. So here I can see that my form processing control is called form processor one and my object detection control is called object detector one. If I wanted to rename this, for example, I could go ahead and rename this and call this um, form processor. and just object detector. Now let's say I wanted to populate something from this form processor. So I'm just gonna add a text input control into my form. I'm gonna just position it over here real quick. And now I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna change my default value for this particular option to form processor and I want to pull in the form contents. So I'm going to go ahead and type in form content and you'll see that my IntelliSense will pick that up. I'm going to pull it from a specific field that was identified in the model. So I'm going to pick fields and I'm going to pull it from the invoice field. And so I click on invoice and now I can see that it populates the invoice number from the invoice field on the PDF. So now I can populate this and put this information into other areas of the application. So it's a great way to be able to use that model as you're moving forward. So that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed our look into AI Builder. Uh, when we come back, we'll do a part two on this where we'll actually do more of like the text analytics and the binary stuff. And we'll show you how to consume that and work with that inside kind of model driven apps and, and some of the items from there. But again, uh, if you're looking for up to date tips and items, please check us out at CRM tip of the day. And if you're looking for more training options, whether it's paid training or free training, please give us a look at 365.training. Uh, it's your source for dynamic and power platform training information and resources so again for everybody this has been derek saying thanks a lot for watching everybody take care and have a good one